Amanita muscaria microdosing is a great antidote for any kind of addiction. Alcohol addiction, opioid addiction, designer drugs, amphetamine, cocaine is between 70 and 86 percent. What else? Addiction, depression, insomnia, psoriasis. I didn't plan to do this study. I didn't plan to write that book. Forget about it. I want to share what happened. How do you use mushrooms? And in this case, I'm not talking about magic mushrooms. I'm talking about Amanita muscaria, this red and white one here on the cover of this brand new book called Microdosing with Amanita muscaria. Today, we are talking to one of the leading experts on this, the one who wrote the book, Baba Masha. That is not her real name, of course, but it's the one that she goes by to help protect her identity. She got banned by the Russian Federation two or three times but in part because she has been introducing the Russian-speaking world to the idea of psychedelics and all the research that's been done in the West to that group of people. Fantastic work that she's doing. A great scientist, amazing mind. I think you're going to enjoy this. I tried to dive into everything from what do you have to be careful about to what are the things that it seems to help, how do you take it from a microdose to a macrodose, and lots of stories in between. So I hope you just enjoy this longer version. Again, the shorter version is up here, which is just condensing all of this down into what I would hope is the best way to get yourself introduced to the idea of using this mushroom in very small amounts. And with that, Baba Masha. I picked up your book right here. Oh, good. Uh, Yep, under the recommendation of some other Russian friends. <laughs> they said, you've got to read this book. It's fantastic. Amanita muscari is also the mushroom that helped launch my channel. For some reason, everybody's interested in it. I found that the information out there is difficult to process from a new person. You know, I'm coming in, it was coming in new over a year and a half ago. Um, I came in with the perception that it was dangerous. I was starting the video saying, okay, here's a mushroom. It's red and white. I talk about science of all different sizes, but I was going to say, but don't take it. It's bad for your liver. And I just did a quick search. And I was like, ah, this doesn't seem quite right. right. Um, <laughs> and you, you have a similar background with that too. Maybe you can dive into how you came across it. The funny part, I finished my uh, podcast with Amanita. You started with it and I, I finished with it. Uh, I was running my psychedelic plants uh, heart reduction podcast for eight years, and uh, I, I launched it in 2014. And by 2016, when I put video about microdosing with um, magic mushrooms, because I tried it myself after I read the James Feldman book, I was microdosing for six months. I took six months break and I did another course for six months and I got so great results. So I published that video about what I got and the uh, testimonies of other people who were following me with uh, magic mushroom microdosing. And some of my followers start writing me about taking Amanita muscaria in small pieces. My reaction was, furious because I'm a doctor and I'm a mushroom hunter. My family was putting me in the forest to pick up mushrooms since I was start to walk because I I was born in the middle of last century in Russia. We didn't have much food, so we were uh, mushroom hunters. My parents told me, don't even look in this direction. And people start writing me, we taking a manita for several years. I'm like, you're crazy. You're going to kill your liver. You're going to kill your brain. But people was were persistent. And I talked with a lot of people uh, on Skype that time. And then I had some uh, bad condition with my back. And I tried everything. I'm a doctor. I know what to use. I tried everything. No, no, no visible results. And then uh, they told me if I will make the tincture from raw amanita muscaria, it will help me. I'm like, nah. But I didn't have a choice. I decided I'm gonna try. 
So I got in the Pacific Coast. I got about 12 mushrooms. I made this tincture 2016. And since then, I go to gym. I walk like crazy for 20 months. And my back just said, good. After that, I was studying Amanita for two years straight. I read all the science articles. I read everything I could. I found a lot of um, history. I found a lot of um, medical articles about um, Amanita use, all the chemical compounds. And then I launched that project. I put 67 people together. They didn't know each other. They were living in different countries. We were talking almost daily about effects how, because we didn't know how much to take. Nobody were ever talking about it. So I was writing down their effects, sleeping, mood, energy, all kind of uh, medical uh, pathology. And the data was so consistent from 67 people. They even didn't know what I do. They, I didn't tell anybody anything. And when I put all this data together in, um, in February 2019, I published that material and it's blue Russian speaking internet. The prices of Dona Manita Mascaria rise like 100%. It was gold Amanita Rush. <laughs> And in six months, I got a two group of 2,000 people who were writing me about microdosing. And then I launched the um, questionnaire. I put uh, questions, just basic. How old are you? How much do you take? I open a chat, live chat. I end up with the two, two live chats 24-7. I was running one, and my assistant Thomas was running another one. Uh, we end up with 8,000 people live talking about taking Amanita Mascaria live. So if anyone will die, we would all know. If any, <laughs> yeah, if, if anyone will have like liver failure or kidney failure, we will know because we were not sitting in a bar bunker. We were not hiding. It was all documented from uh, documented from day one, from a mid, uh, from a summer, 2019. All the effects. How did we do it? How much did we take? I have by now. I have over twenty thousand um, uh, letters or comments written to me, and it's all published. It's documented by day by time. It, it was all anonymous. So by this day, I ran this project for four years. Uh, Amanita Mascaria microdosing. Just Amanita Mascaria, I have to tell you, because we were uh, researching small doses. It's all was volunteer program. Mm -hmm. I didn't push anybody. I didn't tell them, you have to take this and that. This was all volunteer. So 12,000 people, uh, I line up to that day, about 6,000 of them were taking Amanita Mascaria macrodosis, small part of pan Panterina, because Panterina is not the same mushroom and it's not very good to take. It's 50-50. Some people go crazy real easy because it has different chemical mm. substances. And we, uh, I have a lot of people who took middle doses, like from two grams and over every day. It's not good. So the Amanita rule for four years, the rule with Amanita, the less you take, then better the effects. Mm -hmm. And I have a group of people, over 1,000 people, who are taking Amanita dry in big doses, up to 50 grams. That's so, a lot. 50 grams? I can't even imagine grams. taking 50 grams. Oh, yeah. I have an interview with a person. He's a publicly known actor in Russia. He took 50 grams, and I have an interview with him. And I took myself 15 grams, 25 grams. Amanita is not a good psychedelic agent. 
regardless what is legal and you can take and pick it up and eat it's not good because the dose of amanita mascari is strictly individual like with magic mushroom you know if you take one gram what's gonna happen basically five gram you know what's gonna happen with amanita you never know what's gonna be it's totally unpredictable somebody can take five grams and have disconnection mind and body disconnects and the body is really aggressive toward itself start hitting the head of the wall i was I, I collected so many photographs of people injured with broken legs smart face broken jaws photographs it's not like my fantasy in the uh, I, I agree what Amanita trip gives you a lot of insights like any our psychedelics, but the price of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would, price would you say of, that it's, um, I because I, I've talked to a, a few people that really, uh, they don't promote the macro doses, but they say they, they have a lot of benefits to them, but maybe they should be heavily supervised or with a trained shaman or something, somebody who, yeah. who can facilitate because oh, the yeah. risk of overdose is high, something like that. It's, it's overdose is not uh, like pe a pe person going to die. It's not that. Right. It's about physical injuries. Mm -hmm. right. Because uh, people totally disconnected. We are not here. We we see and things, and we could be so aggressive toward the self. Maybe, maybe there is some way to cook it somehow. I don't know because I don't even want. I don't even want to go in this direction. I all I research people were eating raw mushrooms or dry, and it's what the results were deadly. People right. were losing their consciousness for three days going crazy, ending up in um, emergency, collecting galloperidol in their bottoms. And I mean, Ooh. I have over a thousand uh, testimonies about that. So I don't, I don't right. talk yeah. about it. I still have a very small chat for my uh, uh, followers. And we don't discuss Amanita trips. It's on their own risk. I don't mm -hmm. want to encourage mm -hmm. people saying, I agree it gives you insights, you know, because I it was experimenting with psychedelic plants for a decade. So I basically tried all the plants possible with good guides, good shamans, uh, iboga, ayahuasca, cacti, San Pedro, um, peyote, all I went through all of that before I opened my podcast and I tried Amanita 15 grams, 25 grams. Yeah, it gives you the same kind of, some people saying, oh, it's much deeper, it's much better. It's all individual opinion, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, in size of psychedelic plants, we're all at the end, you come up with the same, same exactly philosophy. It's not written, it's not in a book. But if you go it and study, let's say, one plant, let's say ayahuasca for many years, and you every three, six months go there, you end up with a philosophy which you can miss. And it's not going to be individual. It's some kind of school. And Amanita brings you there. But I always give a description like when you take let's say magic mushroom it's like you're driving uh to los angeles from malibu on nice mercedes and when you take amanita you go to los angeles underground and you have to chew the ground with your teeth the result oh, is the same but the price for it is very different so uh i just was uh I was amazed with Amanita qualities in very small do uh, doses. Is a doctor. I'm not saying it's panacea, and uh, I'm not talking about people curing a lot of diseases. I'm talking about il making their conditions much easier. Mm -hmm. Let mm -hmm. Let's say oh. if yeah. Yeah, go. Well, I think you were probably diving into some of the benefits. Would you consider it more of a survey type study? 
because a lot of people that yeah. I talk to dismiss it. They're either in the medical field or, you know, heavily yeah, know. science researched, but they're like, oh, there's no double blind trials. But I'm like, yeah, but, you know, there's data here. There's a lot. You know, somebody have to start, right? Somebody have to start in the... Um, the data I collected, it has many limitations, which separates my book from scientific literature. I have I, I, uh, I have a PhD. I know how to do the double-blind studies. I got my PhD 40 years ago. This is a public survey. This is preliminary study. Just collect information. Should we go to this direction or not? Nobody ever did it. I didn't find any documented data on uh, this large scale of taking microdoses at all, none, zero. So this is a uh, kind of, um, this information is uh, based on uh, indiv individual experiences. We're not talking about clinical study, blind groups or anything. It's descriptive statistics descriptive studies let's say you have you some people do social studies what do we do we call people and ask them questions it's not placebo double study this is an opinion this is descriptive studies a lot of our social studies is based on it and it's legitimate way to study something if somebody want to do the clinical trials go ahead i just <laughs> go ahead but to collect six pounds of testimonies from people who are telling the same thing, hello. But clinical studies, if people want to run, go ahead. I just don't have access to that and I don't have desire to do that. I just wrote my book, not promote Amanita microdosing. It's just a book to share information what happened because uh, Amanita first documented in 1756. The first book was written in 1756. It was a Russian St. Petersburg uh, Academy. Uh, it was um, Professor Krashenikov. He was a participant of Grey Northern Expedition in 1733. And the first and uh, he described intoxication with the uh, Amanita Mascaria in the uh, Siberian tribes. Mm -hmm. And after that, we have several books uh, uh, by uh, Steller in 1793, and then Lindenau, and some other people, and then boom, nothing. From your understanding, is that because it was uh, actively squashed by the powers that be, you know, in, removing it from the tribal you knowledge. Know, uh, I'm unsure how that's happened. Was removed. In history, but not in a lot Russia, of people use it. Yes. Yeah. yeah in in Russia, in Russia, it was removed, totally removed, because I was born myself in this uh, East Siberian place where all tribes were using Amanita before my birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Stalin was uh, taking those territories. They were killing all the shamans, destroying the families. They were taking children out of families to stop all the legend, all the myths, all the culture. And they were putting them in a, uh, foster families so they forget their language. So they totally mm -hmm. destroyed the land, the culture, because it was over 50 different tribes. Small groups of people, very peaceful, very mm -hmm. knowledgeable and what in their this very serious uh, style of living when nine months of cold but they were all widely using amanita mascaria that was uh, all described in this um, northern expedition books you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. and then uh, i was born nobody even knew about it ever but I found uh, very old uh, books. My subscribers sent me a lot of information, like uh, old um, uh, articles. It was no, not clinical studies, but some recipes, even now, uh, 18th century, 19th century, in very weird Russian language, mm -hmm. the old one. So let's say Amanita Mascari tincture 
was used for in Russian territories forever. It's not like I di uh, discovered Amanita muscaria microdosis. It was done before. It was nobody used microdose word. Mm -hmm. I took it from James Fideman because uh, I like his uh, approach. I love his study. And uh, it's kind of the same study, just with different mushroom. And I put it together, a microdosing and Amanita together. It's not like I invented something. People were using it for centuries for some needs. And so what what were the biggest revelations from all of the studies that you, you did, you know, several thousand people? What, what seemed to come to the surface the most? Our personal discovery is a group, not my personal, because all the information I have is from other people, right? From chatting, from talking, from... Um, the discovery which nobody talked before and now this information come coming in a medical articles amanita muscaria microdosing is a great antidote for any kind of addiction alcohol addiction opioid addiction designer drugs amphetamine cocaine any heavy heavy addiction, Amanita Muscaria, a range of, uh, in, uh, in my data information, is between 17 and 86 percent. Wow, that's that's a lot. And do you that's, think it's, yeah. do you think it's um, somehow like a psychological thing where you just allows you to decide or is it working on the physical um, addictive part? You, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, you Robert, know. I don't know how it works because that was not my goal. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put the theories and say, oh, that's worse because and because. No. I collected the data, and if somebody want to study why, that uh, okay. will okay. be their path. I just want to tell you, I was born in a country where there is no person in the, my motherland who never was drunk. Right. So people were drinking excessively, and I have a lot of my friends who died from using alcohol and I was seeing how people were damaging their health, their mind, their body with alcohol. There is no placebo for alcoholics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I just, right. I just there is yeah, okay. none. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're going to tell them, what you're going to do, you're going to put them on drugs, you're going to keep them on rehab, none. And alcohol, I have testimonies of people who are dying from alcoholism. They were taking alcohol in severe dosages for decades. And after a few courses, three, six months, one year, I have so many testimonies. I know it's not a placebo, you know. I, I sent you some pictures yesterday. I have them, yeah, I have them right here. Although... Like, uh, I'm then, probably going to mess up the recording if I share the screen, but I'm looking at them. That's them if fine. You're looking that's fine. <laughs> you, you can put them in a the podcast if you want. Perfect. Let's say, okay, great. Let, let's say I send you a photograph of a person who broke. It's, it's, it's actually my husband. Uh -huh. he, okay. he broke his leg skiing on Christmas. The, uh, this last Christmas. Ay, yeah, yeah. Is that the, that's the lower shin one? Yeah. Did Whoa. you do you see on the picture his uh after the surgery 10 days? Do you see the how big is his leg? Yeah, it's that's swallowed insane. enormously, and then and doctor was like, Oh my god, oh my god, what are we gonna do? Because it's gonna destroy all the um all the old job he did. So I took him home, I put the compress on his leg, and I send you a picture after eight hours of oh, Amanita wow. Mascaria compress, eight hours. I have it wow. all um, uh, documented, eight hours, because when you take the photograph, it gives the uh, immediate time and day you took, right? right? See the difference between eight hours, what it was, and what it become in the morning, his leg. That's a, it's a huge difference. Wow, and after that, really, when, really, when people yeah. were saying, oh, you didn't do placebo double studies. Hello, 
if you want to do it, go ahead. I just, <laughs> when I have that, and uh, you can put later the photographs with the psoriasis. Mm -hmm. Yep, I see that too. When you see those pictures, and when you talk with these people, and when you see it live, their hands, their elbows, their legs, and everything, and when we take my uh, microdosis vanita mascara, you see the difference because some of conditions I cannot document in photographs, like like let's say high blood pressure, improving their sleep getting rid of depression you cannot photograph it but some things you can and uh i have a lot of photographs like this it's just not in a book because i submitted my manuscript in 2020 and i was running my um study two more years oh okay okay and i, I and i collected more data more photographs in this book was so big it was 360 pages so i didn't put many photographs but the thing is for people i have a lot of people who say yeah you didn't run uh, these clinical studies yes i didn't so what i'm not pushing any sales i'm not pushing new product Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, engaged anyhow on advertising or monetizing my information. I wrote the book. I said what happened, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like <clears throat> it's it's not how people are used to thinking, either. Um, I feel like with with the way pharma works and the way people are trained to think about drugs these days, right. they want to just hear certain key points like did it pass clinical blind studies what was the percentage yeah. what is it and that that was how this introduced me to natural medicine a little bit more because i had to find my microdose i had to boil it down and and then learn to listen to my body which is not something i don't think you're ever trained to do in in society today but it opened my eyes and and that's why i'm a big fan of people figuring it out like that too right yeah so, so what were the other things you found then addiction what else? Addiction, depression, insomnia, psoriasis. Um, I have questions for 150 conditions in my questionnaire, 150. And most of them is over 50%. Wow. The, the condition is getting better. The lifestyle, let's say, taking Amanita, Mascari, Microdose, with um, uh, some like Alzheimer. It doesn't cure Alzheimer, but it makes their life easier, you know? Right. Temporarily, because Alzheimer gonna progress no matter what. And I'm not saying for people who request in clinical studies, it's make their life easier. Right. We wake up, we have some memory, we're happy, we're not aggressive, we sleep good, we eat good, we talk with their people. It doesn't cure Alzheimer. That's what we misunderstanding in my study. Let's say uh, any kind of conditions like autism, it doesn't cure autism. Right. It's, it doesn't cure a cerebral palsy, but it's make their life much easier, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? That's what I'm talking about because there is a big difference between curing the diseases and make their life much better because you sleep good, you have appetite, you're happy. You know, that's what I'm talking right. about. Microdosing is also a foreign idea to people. Maybe you can talk to this for a second. I feel like people are used to say a doctor go uh, you have depression or anxiety a doctor might give you a benzodiazepine you take it and you feel right away it's different right uh, and when you're talking about microdosing it's it's not exactly like that right no so how no. do you how do you try to determine if you're getting an effect how do you talk to people about that so the protocol uh, uh, I come up with for four years of studying studying people who were taking macrodosis because in the beginning we didn't know 
how much, how often, what form. We didn't know anything. We were just go, going in a blind direction. And all those questions which I put on my questionnaire, they were coming. They were coming from uh, my people because they were saying, Baba Masha, I'm taking microdose and that's what I have. My psoriasis is gone. I My blood pressure is, and I put question, blood pressure, psoriasis or any other. It was, we were going together for years to discover all those conditions which I put in my book. So for four years, we have protocol like this. You have to find your individual dose because Amanita mascara is growing on different geographic location. It has different chemical compounds. The concentration is different. Even you pick up in month, se month, separate one month at the same forest, it's going to be different. So each, each batch of Amanita you picked and prepared yourself, you have to try for your individual dose. And the dose is like vitamin. You take small piece, you feel nothing. That's the right dose. You don't have salivation, you don't have blast of energy, you don't have like sleepiness or uh, any anything. Non -pa not positive, not negative. You write in your uh, journal what you want, why you take in Amanita. Because if person is healthy and happy, why you want to take Amanita mascara? You're not going to have a super power abilities and fly through the air. And if you're healthy, you shouldn't take it. But if you have some conditions, let's say insomnia, let's say uh, you don't have appetite or whatever, you write down why you're taking it. It does work with money in your career for sure because some people taking it because of that. <laughs> and and when you find your individual dose from a one batch of amanita, and when you take it half gram in the morning or less per take in the morning, at the evening, or both because you have to watch yourself for first week. If you take microdose in the morning and you feel sleepy, then you don't take it in the morning. In the morning. You take it only at the evening time. Mm -hmm. If you take it at the evening time and you, be, you get a lot of energy, you switch because Amanita is so unique. The effect of Amanita microdose depends on the time you take it. Right. I never, I never, I never uh, ever heard about stuff like this. The same stuff taking different time of the day affects you differently. So if you pass all that, I have a whole menu how to take it. And then you you find your dose, you find the time of the day, which when Amanita doesn't affect your living, and you take it for three weeks. Then you stop. You look back, you read what you wrote, and you compare. Mm -hmm. Do you sleep bad? Do you smile in the morning? Do you, do you get aggressive with your relative for at work? How did you go through the day? Did you try to kill everybody? Did you get aggression? <laughs> or you just calm and happy and you don't care? All these subtle, subtle changes. And then you know if it's affects you or not. And then you take some breaks break and then you repeat okay. that's the protocol e even just doing that process is probably new for some people like trying to document their own health um but i think that's really important for people um so i it says in your book some of the big ones were uh sleep addiction analgesic effects and then there were tons of other things as well um yeah. do you want to talk I, i'd love to hear your thoughts on the analgesic effects Amanita mascara, when you use tincture, a tincture, not so far Amanita microdose, it does have analgetic effects, but not much is a, is a tincture which you put it on your skin. Mm -hmm. Because I don't need the clinical studies because I tried it on myself. 
I live on an isolated island. I have a huge farm. I grow all my food myself. And during the summer, I'm all in scar and bruises, beat up by snakes, spiders, and wasps, anything. And I don't have any med uh, medicine in my house, even though I'm a doctor. I even don't have aspirin. So what I do, if I have a wound, this summer, I had a blind study <laughs> performed on myself. Uh, I was beaten by wasps. They attacked me, a whole swarm attacked me. And because I was trying to do this, uh, defend myself, they beat both hands. And my hands were like pillows, both of them. It was first time in my life when I was beaten at both. So I decided, okay, now <laughs> it's time to do a clinical placebo study. So I put a, a compress on my working right hand and the pain went away in 26 because I was monitoring it. 26, 26 minutes, wow. Yeah, it, uh, the pain was gone. I had this uh, sweating, I could bend my fingers, it was red, but that was it. This hand, the pain was unbearable, unbearable because I had multiple bites. So it happened in 10 in the morning. So by 10 p.m., 12 hours later, this arm was almost normal. This one were growing in size and the redness, the allergy were coming to my shoulder and it was itching deadly. So by 10 p.m. I said, enough with clinical studies. So I wrapped it uh, with, uh, I did the conference and 25, 30 minutes was gone, you know? I tried it in myself so many times. It worked uh, on uh, any kind of pain. Let's say menstrual cramps. I wanna tell you important thing, it doesn't, Eliminate the problem why menstrual cramps happen, but it takes the pain away. See the difference? Interesting. And that's that's in eating or or you can't rub it on anything at that stage. You rub it. You rub it rub on it? your stomach, uh, you rub oh. it on the place where um where it happened, like let's say neuropathic pain. I have eighty seven percent of people taking away neuropathic pain doesn't matter when it happened you just put it all over your body half an hour you're so happy it doesn't cure the condition it doesn't eliminate the cause but it takes the pain away it's not addictive like opioids and you have energy you're happy it takes your bad mood negative thinking away let's say uh, we are uh, arthritis arthritis any kind of pain you put the lotion on once or twice. I sent you the picture of uh, uh, tendinitis as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and it took the pain, it took the uh, all the symptoms, you know, in two days. Wow. And I put uh, this uh, question on uh, voting. 92% people of using Amanita Mascaria tincture 92 percent plus i use it on everybody when my husband um was sitting on oxycontin for five six days after he broke the leg last christmas i said let me cure your pain just let me do it he was like oh no i'm gonna take my oxycontin i said forget about oxycontin i was wrapping his leg every night because he was not uh staying in bed he was working in jumping on crutches he but he believes in amanita it's not like psychological belief and uh, placebo he knows he knows since um uh, i have very vicious dogs uh he was playing with the, my pit bull and uh he was jumping in the river and he, his knee met my pit bull teeth <laughs> that's a good way to say it <laughs> yeah it was not, not like my people were attacking my right, husband no it, they, it just he was uh on a this rope jumping in the river and da da you can imagine how deep <laughs> were the woods 
So we come back home. I took this thing, children, and just throw it on his knee and wrap it. Two hours. Get it. Wow. Nothing. I wow. send you the picture. You have a picture. Oh, is that All, the pictures there? Yeah. Okay. It's the pictures on a, uh, of the knee with the it. bloody mm -hmm. wounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look that bad because I took the blood away and you don't see how deep it was because uh -huh. my, my uh, pit bull, she has a vicious <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the wounds were deep. We didn't do anything. We didn't go to doctor. We didn't put stitches. And we didn't. I didn't give him antibiotics. I just put the ammonite alcohol tincture and I wrap it, and that's it. We got that's by. Incredible. That's and incredible. I do. I do it with myself all the time. I just want to tell you, Robin. I'm not promoting ammonita and I'm not pushing anything. I just want to share with people what happened. That's the difference between. People who saying, "Oh, that's not true. We we want a more proof." I don't want to even give you more proof because I don't care. I just want to share information what I find out accidentally, without planning it. I didn't plan to do this study. I didn't plan to write that book. I didn't plan to uh, give all the interviews on a podcast or start selling amanita or tincture. Forget about it. I want to share what happened. That's it. That's what's the difference between um, uh, people who are pushing new product and then you can ask more proof. Mm -hmm. I'm not pushing anything. I even don't care if yeah, you I... believe or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do I do think it throws in some skepticism, uh, probably justified skepticism when you see people that are talking about something, but they clearly have a benefit they're gaining from pushing it right. whatever, that's whatever that means, but yeah that, that's totally fine with me in another discovery hot flushes in postmenopausal <clears throat> microdosing amanita hot flushes is a great great remedy oh really for, yeah for mood for all this and that would know. be inject ingesting it microdose yeah. ingesting it. Ingesting, okay yeah. oh that's great yeah. and what about um uh, so you talk about tinctures and you talk about microdosing. Um, what about the like oils? Have you ever tried experimented with oils? Like, because that's it would be different a little bit because it's it's a little bit different. Uh, I did not uh, try it on my own, but I had a person who helped me a lot, Thomas. He mm. was uh, he lives in the forest just like me. I totally isolated, and he he's practicing amanita he makes kind of all kind of lotions and oils and everything um i have in my book uh, photographs of person with a four stage of finger burn and uh we were trying to cure it in a hospital and after one month they gave up and they said we want to amputate it and i have pictures in dynamic and this person was in in our chat so it was live person it was in the chat it was all documented and people were observing it mm. the thing is uh my podcast in russian language has over 100 live streams with voice live streams when people come in in this conversation and describe their effects it's not like people i found somewhere paid them money to tell how good amanita microdose is. they were coming in my chat we were having 300 400 in the way and over thousand people and people were talking they're talking from different countries all russian speaking from different places and they were talking about their conditions what what happened to them that's the evidence i don't want to translate it all in english because it's just too much to do uh but i have a lot of live people and it's all on youtube who who are talking live if it's all placebo well when you have to take amanita microdosing to access this placebo effect to access that uh cure is a placebo i mean start taking amanita yeah uh, so i 
Well, and actually, I want to I want to ask you about that. I'm assuming the fingers healed. By the way, <laughs> to follow finish up on that, you were talking about the fingers they were going to amputate. Oh yeah, I have uh, pictures in dynamic. This person over six uh, months even grew with nails back. It's on in plugged in. Right, go ahead. Because on um. On the first picture, you can see uh, the skin, the tissue were burned up to the bone bones. And uh, on the last picture, you can see it's all restored. It's in a book. Okay. I, and, by the way, I'm going to, I, I need to just say this. This is my favorite book on Amanina Muscaria. The first chapter where you kind of give a synopsis is probably the best synopsis I've ever read. Um, anywhere, which I really enjoyed. So uh, good job on that. And then, you know, half of the book for people who haven't read it, probably, yeah, about all this much, this much of the book, those are all the personal accounts that you documented. So it almost, like if you were just doing your own research, you could just read through all of them, which I find really interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, because when I was talking with publisher, they said, why don't we just cut off all the personal letters to you? And uh, why don't we just put it by condition? I said, uh-uh. This, uh, by the way, the picture of a burnt skin is on page 57. You can look in the book right now. Is that the one you were talking about with the... Oh, yeah. See the first one and see six months later? Oh, my it, gosh. That's incredible. It, it was uh, Amanita dry powder mixed with... Uh, some animal fat 50 50. wow every day application on the skin so why i want to explain you why i put over thousand testimonies because some people complain and saying oh that's just testimonies it's like on amazon <laughs> reviews <laughs> no yeah, it's right? not it's a little bit different than amazon mm -hmm. review because when you read all those testimonies, you finally realize how individual reaction of everybody on Amanita intake. Right, right. Because, and I think, yeah, because you read well, what happened, bef what was before, how did we take it, what mistakes did we do? Because I put people who overdose a little bit, and when we put the dose, Low, uh, made the lower dose. This is all mistakes, all the pre all the uh, procedures, all the manuals. How different Amanita affects everybody. So you cannot systematize it. Put it in one pill. The reason I start I start uh, doing that project, I'll tell you, because Amanita could not be monetized. Right. You cannot grow it, grow it on your garden. You cannot uh, make any kind of uh, greenhouse because it's symbiotic, uh, symbiotic uh, mushroom. It grows only in certain places in symbiotic connection to uh, certain trees. Plus it losing its potency over time. So you cannot pick uh, Amanita and sell it for 10 years. Uh -uh six seven months forget it it's very seasonal and uh you cannot uh, equalize all the chemical compounds put it in a pill and start selling it because it doesn't work that's the reason i put all these personal testimonies to see how different it for everybody awesome. and that's why uh i decided i'm gonna put it this way so if people want to do it they have to do it on their own with and not buy it on internet this is the worst thing you can do buy some amanita unknown source because it could be picked up in some uh, very bad uh, ecology, uh, ecology places some chemical mm -hmm. dumpsters mm -hmm. near the road it sucks everything in mm -hmm. that's something that i get asked a lot is how dangerous yeah. or how, how careful do you have to be of where it is and uh yeah i would imagine you know, you have to be somewhat careful. I, I spent some time in Chernobyl, and uh, after that, you weren't really supposed to pick mushrooms for a while, for instance, because it can right. <laughs> flex and you, chemicals. Yeah, and the amount of Amanita mascari grown in Chernobyl is enormous. 
Imagine the people pick it up and sell it on the internet. Sure. Oh. Right, right, right. So, okay, I, I think one of the things that I've found, I, I've made three videos on Amanita so far. Everyone always asks, how do I get started? And I think one of the best ways is to pick up this book. So that's exactly. a good promotion. But yeah. if if you were to summarize briefly, you know, you first thing you're going to read a you know you need to get knowledgeable you need to learn about it what's the path um when you go out and you pick a mushroom you're going to you're not going to just like start taking a thumbnail sized bite of it right you're you're as actually a little bit of a process because you give us a summary of what you found is the best approach with the you know understanding that you really should be researching it all don't just go by this little explanation right. yeah before you go pick up a manita the person should buy scale. So not take a nail size or anything, a scale. Small scale for $10, so you can wait it. The person should go to a forest and very nice clean place because I go to Pacific Coast from Monterey up to Seattle. Amanita is everywhere on the Pacific Coast. And we have season, it starts in Seattle about um, August and it goes down and by March it's reach uh, reaches Monterey Bay. You pick up Amanita cups only because stems and cups they have different chemical compounds. The percentage is different and uh, the chemicals are different. Then a uh, person should not wash it cannot wash Amanita because all the chemicals are water soluble. So if you wash the Amanita cup, you want to wash everything away and nothing going to be left. You should, a uh, person should clean it up with an uh, old um, toothbrush, pick up all the pieces of dirt, little bit with a uh, dry, uh, with a wet napkin very carefully, and then dry it up on a uh, dehydrator temperature is between 45 and 50 Fahrenheit and, the, and then it takes about 24 30 hours me personally I'm cutting a manita like pizza through mm -hmm. the middle because the ends are very thin and the middle is thick so you cut it like pizza on small triangles and you turn it you have to watch it because it's easy to burn Amanita and you have to watch it. I take those three angles and then they crispy dry like chips. I put it in a, a gallon jar, put them there. And after I dry everything, I close the jar overnight and then Amanita start sweating and it gets wet again from, uh, because you cannot uh, dry it through in one time and after it's become like elephant ears soft mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you you put it in dehydrator and dry it up for two hours more then you put it in a jar and i use a uh, small little bags with salt or rice to take excessive water keep it dry and uh you can uh keep it in a refrigerator but if you want to store it for a long time i put this jar in a freezer and it stays a little bit longer and next one here is come a trick so when i study amanita muscaria intake in couples i realized two people taking amanita the same amanita and we have different effects the wife, for example, is mellow, happy, doesn't care about anything. And the husband is like, oh, become aggressive, doesn't sleep. And I'm like, why? When I start running this question through my uh, chats with 8,000 people, so at the end, I find out Amanita with time changing its chemical properties. I think uh, ibotenic acid converts to musimol, but I don't want to do any theories. I just want to describe you the facts, what I get, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. I got. So 
me personally, it's very hard to make me mad, aggressive, or start like la 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 la. I, I'm like, you have to do real big effort to make me mad. And my assistant Thomas, he's like a bum. You can say one wrong word and forget it. We realized I can take fresh dried amanita, and it suits me much better than three months later. Mm -hmm. This amanita fresh uh, fresh dried, I even can take small pieces of a raw, very small pieces. It does not it's affect me in positive way. And when amanita dries over uh, stays in a jar for three months, it, it's affect me in negative way. I'm drowsy, I'm sleepy, I have no energy, I don't want to do anything, I have an apathy. And Thomas, my assistant, who has totally different um, mental condition, because he's like a blowing bomb. Anytime, you, you never can predict what he going to do next minute. He cannot take fresh dried amanita at all. He cannot use tincture. It causes him waves of aggression, even like black floaters in the eye and he's getting like you know mm -hmm. very negative results so what i find out studying the couples because i have over 20 couples and they had different effects of the amanita so we were talking and talking for three four months the population is uh, divided by three groups First group, about 30%. They don't care what kind of amanita we should take, fresh dried or three months later. We call it fermentation. It's not really fermentation, but that's what we give the name fermentation. So 30% can take any kind of amanita. 30% of people can only take fresh dried, like first week, first month, positive effects. And a third of the population can take only amanita who was fermenting or whatever, staying in a jar over three months. That's why you cannot monetize it. That's why you cannot put it in a capsules and start selling like crazy because it doesn't work this way. It doesn't. That's, that's incredible. And that's hard for people to wrap their head around. Yeah. And, and when you buy amanita online, you don't know what temperature we used when we dried it we might use 100 fahrenheit and it's nothing left we might wash it to make like a presentable look right mm -hmm. if we wash it forget it there's nothing left we don't know how long we store it because we store it changing the chemical properties it's very tricky mushroom that's why everything in testimonies because i i was putting people's question people answer and by the time i collected over twenty thousand testimonies on that Incredible. i i put them almost every day when i have time five ten a day people still writing me they describe it even i don't run my um study anymore but they still writing me in another thing i sent you photographs which i of my test on the animals with the yes, quail eggs yes. can somebody Those send quail me eggs. Okay, I see quail eggs mm -hmm. right first when somebody sent me the chicken size egg i was like oh no you know even even me uh working with amanita so many years i'm skeptical still skeptical so I decided, okay, I'm going to give it to my quails because I have quails um, in my uh, on my farm. And you see the difference in the size of the egg. Yeah, you I know? see. So did it get, it got bigger or smaller? I bigger. Mean, they got bigger. Yeah. Okay. So that this is actually a good point to talk about, and maybe we can lead into this, but I know you ran some studies with them on your animals probably in part to see if there were any dangers of using Amanita muscaria. So, so yeah. what should, what should people know about 
that uh, it would be called contraindications, but just you know, essentially the things you have to be careful about uh, with the Amanita. Okay, I have uh, contraindications um, for any psychiatric pathology mm -hmm. because people with uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, some of them saying, yeah, I have a big success. I'm not advising take them alone in the kitchen because we cannot evaluate their condition. Mm -hmm. If we work together with the therapist, right, mm -hmm. then we might try, but not alone in the kitchen with a bunch of amanitas because it's unpredictable. So we are uh, psychiatric diseases in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy, it's clinical trial <laughs> with placebo, which I, uh, uh, I run on my guinea pigs. Uh, so I build up the house and I separated my guinea pigs on three groups. So first group was, was double placebo study because my guinea pigs, we don't know if they were taken. So one group, they were not taking anything. Second group, they were uh, taking Amanita tincture in their drink. Okay. And a third group, they were taking dry Amanita powder spread over the food. So I ran five generations of guinea pigs taking Amanita microdoses. Not all the time, but like three weeks break three weeks break five generations because you can watch the health condition when uh, your animals give birth to their children and their children take microdoses and children of children so you're gonna end up with some crazy four six legs animals two heads or liver, liver failure, or you, you watch the condition of uh, newborns and how they develop the activity, the size, the weight, the everything. You cannot, uh, uh, so the pregnancy is big no-no contradiction. No, because I had 50% of stillborns. Wow, okay, right. Only if you give it to the pregnant female. Right. Not when she is in a normal state of her life. Let's say she took a manita, she had a break for three weeks, and then in our course, and when break, and when she get got pregnant, the children are very healthy, and their children of children are happy and healthy, they're active, they're energetic, they have good weight compared to control group. But if you feed Amanita Macrodosis during the pregnancy, that's a bad choice. Right, right. Well, that's good that you looked into that <laughs> briefly. And it's I also did. probably a good warning for pretty much any drug use. I did, Robert, yeah. because uh, after I ran uh, all that um, study and so many people accidentally got involved in my study i kind of have had a guilt trip right. i thought what if i'm wrong right what if i'm wrong uh, because my russian book was downloaded quarter million times wow i published it in uh, 2020 in russia quarter million people downloaded electronic version i'm like what if i'm wrong what if, what if it was just like some more <laughs> that's why i i run uh, it on animals to prove it to myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not to prove it to my um audience or anybody just to prove it to myself i'm not mistaken i didn't make a mistake and it's uh safe right two, two years i was doing uh, this study on my uh guinea pigs that's yeah. awesome. Well, that's, <laughs> I've, I heard that you were doing that and I don't think most people would even think to do that. So that elevated you in my mind. I was like, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> You're running the studies yourself. Um, but also it's fantastic that you did that. So uh, on animals, it's quails and um, 
and uh, guinea pigs. Yeah, but, it was very interesting, you know, Robert, because it gave me different life. It's like I was a born again. <laughs> I don't like that born again uh, expression, but <laughs> in 2016, Robert, I couldn't walk. I had such a big pain in my back because I damaged my spinal in the gym and mm -hmm. I had five millimeters bulge and all doctors, I personally know all my friends were saying, oh, let's operate it, da, da, da. I'm like, no. And when I started using Amanita tincture, since 2016, I don't have pain in my back. It didn't cure my condition. It didn't take away the injury, but I don't have pain. And I don't use it all the time. I was using it over the years, over the years. And let's say two, three years ago, I don't use it anymore. I just have to be careful. I go to gym, I walk for 20 miles, I go hunting Amanita every winter. And I have to walk 15, 20 miles to find a couple pounds. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can. And before that, I couldn't even work on my farm. I have to stay in bed when it was very bad i couldn't even go to the bathroom to, to oh that God. point that's why i started that research not because i want to write the book it was not even in my mind i just was so curious because i i'm a trained doctor i'm brainwashed very strong <laughs> you know i was believing in aspirin for so many years <laughs> right right and it was just out of my curiosity and people who work with me, I'm so grateful to them because it was all volunteer trials. I didn't ask anybody. And we were so nice because people of 12,000 people writing to you for four years, it takes a big effort, you know? Yeah. And it was all a community effort. Uh, not yeah. just what I discovered, blah, 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 Masha. No, people did it. A group of 12,000 people did it. That's awesome. And I think, you know, we haven't addressed this so far, but um, I think that a lot of the people that watch my work, uh, are are they enjoy that I come from a science background, which is what you come from. Um, I think in some ways, you know, like a the hippy dippy approach i'll put it that way right. to psychedelic <laughs> the little it turns them off because it i don't know it's it's a foreign type approach and they don't want to go down that hole but you obviously have uh you know kind of hippy glasses and a wig on right now <laughs> do you want to talk about why you're doing that yeah uh, yeah this is my stage look uh, i'm playing a keyboard in a um, psychedelic rock band and <laughs> And that's my stage look. Really? That's, so you, do, <laughs> yeah. you play keyboard? That's incredible. I okay. play keyboard in the psychedelic rock band. It's how I appear on the stage. And, um, you know, I'm not going to prove anything my way, like Thomas Hudson saying shrooms and brooms way. To tell you the truth, I don't care. I did this research. I'm so happy with results. I don't do it anymore. I close my psychedelic podcast. It's not like I want to bring more people to my podcast. I, I don't run my podcast anymore. I closed it in April because of a war what happened in my country. Mm -hmm. Because 50% uh, of my people were Russian people and 50, a lot of people from Ukraine and when people who were helping me with my administrators and my telegram chat start dying I realized I can't talk about microdosing when it happened with Russian speaking territories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and pretend nothing is going on so I shut down my podcast and uh, I don't do any work anymore and I switched to totally different uh, subject what i'm researching right now on my own not being a public person because i got a lot of this stuff like clinical blah 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 shrooms, shrooms and brooms forget it i don't want to even uh, do that i switch to different subject i, I am uh, researching the uh, health benefits of some small animal which gives me a lot of benefits to me to my friends to my family and i'm so excited and i'm not gonna do it public 
I don't have to prove myself in front of people. Why? And uh, so you were laughing at me when I said Baba Masha is dead. Yeah, she is. <laughs> I'm Baba Masha representative. <laughs> but uh, I'm done. I'm done with public appearance. I'm done with psychedelic studies. Uh, I said what I want. I translated a lot of uh, English books, articles. I introduced uh, to Russian speaking people, a lot of uh, people which are prohibited in their country and websites like Shroomery and um, all those popular international websites were shut down in Russia. We, we don't have any information. So I translated a lot of books and articles. I Everything is in my videos, which still on YouTube. I have nothing to say. Thanks, Baba Masha. I'm right now private person. <laughs> and I do my research on different stuff. I do. It's not like I want to go public and say people, oh, believe me, forget it. <laughs> right. Every, right. Everybody is uh, on their own terms. I think you have so much that we can all learn from. So I appreciate that you're able to come on here, for instance, and, and chat with us about it. Because even though it's all out there, um, there's not there's not a whole lot of you saying it out there. But you've done so much of the research. And I think it's valuable hearing it from you because it comes with so much authority. And whether or not, you know, uh, you feel that way, I, I feel like it's just great hearing from you and talking about it. Um, it was us, very great, know. great event, you know, uh, yeah. despite all these uh, studies, because uh, I was teaching medicine in my country when I was younger. And uh, it was, uh, and I like science, I like research, I like it. I like it. And I'm like med scientists were doing it in my isolated island, mm -hmm. line mm -hmm. up 12,000 people in the country and they even don't know who I am. <laughs> uh, and it was fun to talk to, with people, help them and see all the positive changes in the very hall, you know? Yeah. It was yeah. a really exciting uh, event. So I want to end with one last thing because it's something I'm working on. It's related to this, but it's a video that that kind of talks about the relationship between um, the current Western medicine, um, and I have to like define that a little bit, but and then maybe alternative medicine because I found there's two camps of people. Um, you're either for or against, and there there's little, very little gray area in the middle for a lot of people. Um, what do you see as the maybe the positives and benefits of each, or can you kind of just talk about that difference of? Because we're th this would be, I think, considered less Western medicine and more alternative medicine. I have a lot of training in medicine. I was uh, trained by 12 years. I was trained as pedi pediatrician, pediatric surgeon. Then I switched to obstetrics and gyne gynecology. So I went a lot through a lot of things until I realized I don't want to do it anymore because I found some rights because when you go in medical school they brainwash you in a way oh you're like second after the god you save lives da 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 and it's ego trip mm -hmm. right now the our official medicine is good with surgeries in accidental practice let's say car accidents whatever accidents the surgery but the preventive medicine, there is a standard list. You go to the doctor, they check, do, take all the tests. They said, oh, you have this, 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 and this. Have all those ball of pills, which are written down in the manual. And you cannot go left or right because you're going to be fired. That's it. Let's say we take atherosclerosis. You can pull it up. It's public information. If person have atherosclerosis, what you should prescribe? One, two, three, four, five, seven, regardless. And if patient not going to take it, the doctor will be mad because if he not going to put his patient on those pills, he's going to be fired. Hmm. That's what I don't like because uh, 
there is no alternatives right now. You go to the doctor and they prescribe you, prescribe the patient what they were told to prescribe in that condition. Mm -hmm. That's what um, I have a Medicare and I'm paying so much money for my Medicare because I make a lot of money and I pay like $700 for my Medicare every month. And my husband say, why don't you go to the doctor and run the test? I said, why? I even don't have file in, the, uh, in America. Uh, they don't know I exist. My physician never heard my name. They didn't run any tests on me. <laughs> I don't want to even go because, you know, our body is very... Um, uh, we have uh, things come and go in, in, let's say if you come and I run the test, I will always find out something wrong with you. I'm going to prescribe you some pills. If you have some free time, go on uh, internet and read about side effects of aspirin. Mm. It's a public information. You go to PubMed and you read side effects of aspirin. It's from... Uh, you just read it carefully it's about 60 different conditions you can get and it's not side effects it's effects right right it's effects it's not side effects you can have a, a failure of many organs you can die you can have stroke you can have whatever just from aspirin which is over counter and after 50 years old or all our population in many countries take aspirin daily. Read about that. Just mm -hmm. read out of mm -hmm. curiosity. How many positive and what's negative? That's what I call side effects, which might occur. No, it's mm -hmm. effects. Mm -hmm. That's what. Um, that's why for the last 40 years, I didn't take any pills at all. I don't have them in my house. I'm almost 70 right now and I have no diseases, none, zero. Yes. Ask me why, because I don't take any pills and I don't have side effects. <laughs> and if I have some condition, I know how to cure it with my remedies, which don't need clinical placebo studies in my case. <laughs> That's the point. That's my yeah. opinion. I'm not against mm. the medicine. Medicine is great. When something uh, in emergency, there is a there is a good pills, there is good doctors. I'm not dismissing the official medicine at all. But now it's business. Mm -hmm. And my opinion, if country is great and uh, government likes their people, they should do living and medicine free. Because we cannot speculate on the health and death of citizens of the country. If you want to be a good country, give people medicine for free because it's their life or death. Don't speculate on it. Oh, you don't have insurance, go die in a ditch. That's mm -hmm. not right approach, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I think. Yeah, well, I would agree with you on that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will, I will let you know when that video comes out, but I wanted to ask you that. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. But that's later. That's later. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, I think we covered everything I wanted to talk about the benefits okay. and some negatives and some of your perspective on it. Um, oh, do you have a something real quick? Oh, I yeah. just, um, you were talking about the ways people take it. Go ahead and you hey, can hey. say it, say it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You, what? Um, you had mentioned some of the ways that people take it. You said you mentioned tinctures um, and lotions, oils, and you put it up like a powder on for your chickens. Um, but have you heard, uh, I mean, of people smoking it or people reporting with that? Yeah. That seems like it might have some intrinsic oh, problems because another... you're actually smoking it and, you know, it's fire in your lungs. <laughs> Yeah, but I was wondering about that. That's a good last one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have, uh, <laughs> I have people tried. I tried myself. It's a waste of product. Mm -hmm. Um, if you smoke a little bit, uh, you don't have any effects. If you smoke a little bit more, you just become dull. 
mm -hmm. kind of stupid. And if people want to smoke something, they should smoke grass, but <laughs> okay. marijuana. That's a much better right. cho choice. Uh, more uh, effects uh, in smoking amanita is uh, no, no, no. Plus, all those uh, things you uh, be a uh, smoke you inhale. It's not very good for lungs at all, mm -hmm. at all. So even I was trying to um, smoke it through water. Um, mm -hmm. What do you call it? Bong. Right, right. It's nothing. No, you don't have alternative state. None. Uh, very good uh, recipe in my book. Uh, if people like very deep meditation and they are familiar with the alternative state of mind, there is a really good recipe of amanita with mi milk cooking. You cook it with milk, and the recipe is in a book. Mm -hmm. And you can digest. Uh, you digest it by small shots every forty-five minutes. So you can control the condition which you want to reach and you can stop any time and you can use uh, up to 15 grams of dry powder. It's, it's a kind of very deep meditation when you stop thinking at all. Mm, you, it, it, and yeah. you stop thinking at all and your body is so still, you don't want to move. You know, that's hardest part in meditation because you want to sit and eat and do something. Mm -hmm. With Amanita, you just sit still for seven, eight hours. Your head is empty and you have great insights. And it's uh, the only thing in my book is too much honey you have to put it. It's three, three tablespoons. So if you're gonna try it, don't use three spoons, just use one because it's become so sweet, it's even not pleasant to drink. I don't okay. personally don't eat any sugar, that's maybe for personally to me. But this is very good to reach alternative state, but it's not a real trip. It just push you so down in your mind, you know, when you reach the deepest, deepest point, let's say on mushrooms or ayahuasca. You come to a state when you just so still in mind and body, and when it started your own journey. That's a good recipe. That's awesome. It's much much better than smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I call that feeling the great thud. The great thud. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good recipe, and it's in a book. You can find it in the recipes. Well, I'm gonna leave a, a a last little plug for the book uh it's omni a uh, microdosing with amanita muscaria that's the yes. english version it's in russian too is there are there other languages available too because i have a lot of people needing this in other languages i've found but oh we should talk with the publisher because mm. we have all the copyrights i just keep mm. the russian copyrights mm. for myself right so i can end up with which rooms and brooms <laughs> <laughs> right there you go for pharma followers <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome if you like pharma we should read my book fantastic and i'll leave links in the description to your podcast in russian because it has captions in english i think right so yeah for i have a whole channel uh for amanita microdosing and i put uh, english subtitles not everything but most videos yeah okay Fantastic. Well, thank you again for the time, for the knowledge, and um, just sharing sharing some thank of this. You. With us. I think it, it'll thank help you. a lot of people, and I appreciate it. So. Yeah, I wish you to uh, continue to do your beautiful videos. I like your editing because I'm an editor yourself, and I, when I watch your video in Jamaica, it's really great. I appreciate all that. All the I shots, all that. the lightning, and everything. <laughs> Big thanks to my patrons who are always supporting this work. I wish you well on your journey to try to have fantastic health, learn about the natural world, and try to rediscover some of these natural medicines. All right, see you in a future video. Stay safe, everyone.